Amorosa Manigault Newman is out with a new book, Savaging President Trump, who made her famous by putting her on The Apprentice, then fired her from a White House job in December. She said on Meet the Press this morning that she'd heard a tape from Apprentice Days of Trump allegedly using the N-word. And once I heard it for myself, it was confirmed what I feared the most, that Donald Trump is a con and has been masquerading as someone who is actually open to engaging with diverse communities. But when he talks that way, the way he did on this tape, it confirmed that he is truly a racist. President had a brief but pungent response when a reporter asked about his former aide. Yes, low life. She's a low life. Joining us now is former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer, author of the new book, The Briefing, Politics, the Press, and the President. All right, so given that Amorosa was fired just eight months ago from the White House and that she's trying to sell a book about the President, which happens to be called Unhinged, how seriously should the media take her charges? Not, not at all. Uh, look, this is someone who says that she resigned moments after she left the White House. Now she says she was fired. This is someone who said the president wasn't a racist. Now she says he was. She says that the president uh, was a great man. They accomplished a lot. Now she calls it into question. What's changed in those eight months? She went on the record right after she left the White House, specifically talking about how she left the White House, why she left the White House, and what she thought of the president. Let me it guess, wasn't, hold on. is that she's selling a book? I was going to say, the only thing that's changed is she's now looking to make money off of it and sell a book where... Having gone through this process myself, my guess is she sat down with publishers who said, if you'll say the following, we can give you more money. So it is complete opportunism, and it's completely false. Sarah Huckabee Sanders says the book is riddled with lies and false accusations from a disgruntled White House employee. Now, it's interesting because Omarosa said when the, when the stuff started to leak out that she had heard, she knew, she had heard herself. She told NPR she had heard herself Trump using the N-word back in The Apprentice and now, days. Yes. And then in the book, she attributed it to sources who supposedly had a tape of this. Uh, and then she said that on Meet the Press again today. How credible is that accusation? She, she's not at all. And how, I think the, the other point that's fascinating to me is that for all these news organizations that decry the use of the word fake news and talk about the need to be using facts and pursuing the truth, here they are taking someone who has been largely discredited by her own words within a matter of months and putting her on a, a esteemed uh, sh political talk show as a lead guest, wishing her well and passing along accolades on the book, as opposed to recognizing what this is. It's opportunism, and it's completely false. But you're saying so she I, has no right to be interviewed? No, she has absolutely right. But my yeah. point is, is that look at the questions that are going to ask. Look at the spotlight that they're putting it on her. These are the same people who ignored her during her time at the White House, who didn't deem her credible, who clearly, through her own words and interviews and contradictions, is not credible. And yet, these members of the media who decry the use of fake news, who talk about the need to pursue facts and the truth, give her a platform and highlight her. Because why? Because she's attacking Donald Trump. That's why. Right. So, so if, she, if she, she used, to be, out and she used to be viewed as a kind of a fringe character. Right. And if she, came out, if she right. came out and continued the conversation that she had had when she right. left the White House, praising him, none of these people would have her on their shows and none of them would be talking about her. Right. But because she's looking to make a buck, they're willing to put her on and expose her. Because as long as you're being critical of Trump, then they'll give a platform. But the bigger issue that I think is fascinating after that interview is she taped the chief of staff of the White House in the Situation Room, clearly a violation of every security protocol that she signed when she got a, when she applied for a security clearance. And, and since yet you, not and asked one question about that on that show, not asked about undermining her own security clearance. All right. And since you brought that up, we have the tape as played on NBC uh, this morning. Let's take a listen. I think it's important to understand that if we make this a friendly departure, um, we can all be, you know, you can look at, look at your time here in, in uh, the White House as a year of service to the nation, uh, and then you can go on without any type of uh, difficulty in the future relative to your reputation. So she's boasting about this tape, and she says that John Kelly threatened her with those words. I, I think John Kelly Friendly treated, her, treated yeah. her with a level of respect, considering a lot of the concerns that there were rolling around the White House in terms of her recording private conversations, in terms of her inappropriate use of government um, uh, resources, and the treatment that she had of other employees. John Kelly gave her an opportunity to walk away uh, with her dignity and respect. And how she pays it back is she brings a personal recording device into the Situation Room in the White House in massive violation of every security protocol, that should be the story right now. I mean, the idea that you are willing to go to that length 
to do that. Now, who knows what else is happening, but that in itself is a massive security violation. Okay, so let me ask you this before we run out of time. Uh, she says that after she was fired, the Trump campaign offered her $15,000 a month. She would sign a non-disclosure form, and she calls that hush money. Yeah, look, here's the reality. Everyone who worked on that campaign uh, and that and was part of it signed a, a non-disclosure agreement to begin with. It's standard operating procedure that she had signed multiple times before. It's nothing more than the procedure that she had followed before and clearly violated. But she left the White House praising the president. I think the campaign wanted to to uh, continue a relationship with her based on the comments that she made leaving mm -hmm. the White House. Had they known that she couldn't be trusted, had they known that she would turn on the president, who has frankly given her the entire platform, whether it was the apprentice or the White House, they probably wouldn't have offered her that job. Well, but, by the way... Uh, but we, it, is, it, it was standard procedure for everyone, and her going back multiple multiple opportunities, whether it was the apprentice, uh, the campaign, and otherwise, she had signed non-disclosure agreements that made very similar language each time. By the way, we talked about this supposed and more tape, which nobody has heard. It's been this big rumor. Uh, one of the sources she quotes in the book is Frank Luntz, who has come out publicly and said he never heard it, he never told her that, and she never bothered to check with him in the writing of the book. So if uh, she now is so troubled by the president's racial language, and look, I mean, she was he, the president did hire her, so he did sort of give her this stature before he decided to let her go through John Kelly. Um, how does she account for the fact that she did he, that the, Donald Trump did so much for her career as an African American woman? I, I mean, I think that, again, I think if, if you're looking for contradictions, it's the entire book is clearly riddled with them. Which you've read? I've read. Yes, it is over and over again. From from the mere fact that she talks about the fact that she left the White House and said that she resigned. Now she says she was fired. She says that the president was someone that did a lot for the African-American community. He lowered unemployment. He uh, did stuff with the historically black universities and colleges. Um, he has done a lot for opportunities in that community. And yet now, and she was so proud of it during her time, she was very public in her defense of what she had done and what the president has done. And in a matter of months, the only thing that has changed is her getting a book deal. That's it. Sean Spicer, thanks very much for coming in this Sunday. You bet. Thanks for having me.